Hello. When it comes to high-tech crimes, we often think of individuals with exceptional intelligence, high education, and specialized skills. They commit crimes without leaving any traces and remain terrifyingly mysterious. And today is a typical case of high-tech crime that has caused a stir throughout China. On September 11, 2003, also the mid-autumn festival of that year, in the city of Suzhou, Jiangsu province, a renowned heart surgeon named Guo Zuyan received an urgent phone call. In that call, distressing news was conveyed to him. His daughter, Guo Du, had a heart attack and stopped breathing, currently undergoing emergency treatment at the hospital. Around 10.20 p.m. that same day, Mr. Zuyan quickly arrived at the hospital. As he entered the emergency room, he saw his daughter lying weakly on the bed. Despite calling in specialized doctors and making every effort to save Guo Du, everything proved to be in vain. After two hours of relentless struggle, he knew that there was no hope left to save his daughter. This high-tech criminal took away Guo Du's life, leaving a tremendous loss for the entire family. In the hospital, everyone was immersed in pain and despair. Chuo Hu Kong, Guo Du's husband, lay beside his wife's body, crying bitterly. At that moment, Mr. Zhu Yan, the director of the cardiac surgery department of Suzhou Medical College, was shocked. His son-in-law, Hu Kong, was also a renowned surgeon trained and recommended by him. Two years ago, Guo Du had told him that she always felt a lingering pain in her heart, but no one could have imagined that this pain would drive her to such a tragic death. The two skilled doctors, Dr. Zhu Yan and his son-in-law, Hu Kong, could not find the cause of the symptoms in her heart. The situation became even more bizarre when their daughter died with a bloated abdomen, bruised body, dilated pupils and signs of vomiting. So, who was the culprit? Let's start the investigation together. Welcome to Chinese Crimes, a channel dedicated to real-life crime stories in China. Mr. Zhu Yan began to suspect his daughter's death might not simply be a heart attack. He wondered if there were another toxin in her heart. So, he took a sample of her vomit and packaged it in a bag to send to the Suzhou Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Around 3 a.m. the next morning, Mr. Zhu Yan called Hui Kong separately to talk. He emphasized that both of them were doctors and Gyu Tu's death was an unusual case. He believed that Hu Kong had the ability to self-diagnose and treat this disease in time. However, Hu Kong just said that his wife died of a heart attack, but his face became confused and pale. Mr. Zhu Yan decided to request a post-mortem examination to clarify the matter. When he heard the autopsy results, Hu Kong's mood became sluggish. He sat on the ground, holding his head and grinding his teeth. He murmured that he really didn't know what had happened. His mental state became unsettled after his wife's death. Mr. Zhu Yan also didn't know whether he was affected or not. He realized that everything would only be known after completing the autopsy process. A day later, on September 13th, an unrelated procedure was completed, and forensic doctors were present to conduct the autopsy. At 8 p.m., as the investigators prepared for the autopsy, unexpectedly, Hui Kong suddenly became confused. Hui Kong shouted, everyone go away, I can't witness my wife in agony. However, because he had registered, the doctors could not abandon this process. Hui Kong suddenly pleaded with his father-in-law to stop the autopsy. He stumbled, even scolding his father-in-law. My wife is already dead, and you still want to make two suffer. But Mr. Zhu Yan insisted on continuing the autopsy, and the two argued. Hui Kong knelt down clinging tightly to the forensic doctor's thigh, trying to obstruct the autopsy process. In the end, others had to pull Hui Kong away from the scene. The autopsy was conducted according to procedure, and after it was completed, the body was cremated. Hui Kong's abnormal behavior attracted the attention of the police, who understood that preventing the autopsy process was also hindering the search for the truth. The secret investigation into Hui Kong would begin immediately while waiting for the final autopsy results. During this process, the police quickly discovered that Hui Kong quickly recovered from the pain of losing his wife and eagerly began dating multiple women. 
The final autopsy results confirmed that the medical anesthetic, ketamine, was found in Tu's body. Combined with clinical symptoms, the cause of Tu's death was determined to be heart failure due to ketamine use. So, Tu did not commit suicide. Instead, all signs indicated a serious criminal case. Ketamine, a general anesthetic commonly used in surgery, became the focus of the investigation. When injected intravenously or intramuscularly, ketamine quickly renders patients unconscious. However, if used improperly, it can cause increased blood pressure, increased intracranial pressure, and other adverse reactions. Individuals with heart failure and high blood pressure should never use ketamine. It's noteworthy that ketamine acts as an invisible and odorless anesthetic, making it a dangerous drug if misused, causing cardiac fibrosis and even death. The police quickly drew an accurate conclusion. Tu did not eat anything before returning home that day, indicating that someone had used ketamine at home. And only Hu Kong, her husband, was a surgeon who could obtain ketamine from the hospital. Just 10 minutes after taking ketamine, signs of poisoning appeared. But Hui Kong delayed bringing his wife to the hospital for two hours, raising suspicion that he had postponed helping his wife. Based on the evidence, the police expanded the investigation and found that Hui Kong had mismanaged and used anesthetics in the hospital not as strictly as reported. From the records, it could be seen that Hui Kong had used anesthetics multiple times, but it could not be determined whether they had been used in surgical cases or not. He sneaked into the operating room and stole the anesthetic without being detected. As a result, he became the prime suspect. Twelve days later, on the night of September 23rd, the police would arrest Hui Kong at his home and detain him for investigation. As the investigation deepened, the police announced that Hui Kong had experienced a poor childhood, but through effort, his fate had changed. After graduating in 1993, Hui Kong was assigned to work at a district hospital in Suzhou. He faced difficulties at work, and his salary was only average. However, Hui Kong decided to continue learning and striving. In 1994, Hui Kong was admitted to the Faculty of Medicine at Suzhou University as a graduate student. And it was during his postgraduate studies that he met his mentor, the renowned heart surgeon Dr. Guoi Zuyan. Mr. Zuyan was highly respected and had many connections in the medical field. Hui Kong understood that if he could have a good relationship with his advisor, he would receive help in the future. From then on, he didn't miss any opportunities. He became more decisive and enthusiastic than ever. With professionalism and relentless effort, he impressed Mr. Zhu Yan. Mr. Zhu Yan recognized Hui Kong's talent and professionalism, and he became a highly regarded figure. Externally, this young man exuded talent and charm. He always appeared neat, graceful, and courteous. After a long period of interaction, Mr. Zhu Yan found him reliable and satisfied with all aspects of him. Both parties gradually built a reliable and close relationship. Not only in work, but Hui Kong also participated in important medical conferences with Mr. Zhu Yan. Mr. Zhu Yan often invited him home for dinner. Family members also had a very good impression of Hui Kong when they met him. With the appearance of a scholar and a stable personality, Hui Kong attracted the attention of two, Mr. Zhu Yan's eldest daughter. Both were 26 years old, and Tu had been educated since childhood and was a very kind heart. Tu no longer hid her love for Hui Kong, a confident and proud student. Both spent time getting to know each other, and their feelings grew deeper and deeper. But if Hui Kong became a son-in-law of the family, it would be great, and Mr. Zhu Yan would also have a successor to his business. Mr. Zhu Yan decided to support these two young people to get closer. Hui Kong understood that if he really wanted to go further with Tu, he had to sacrifice many things, including the long-standing relationship with his ex-girlfriend. After breaking up with his girlfriend, Hui Kong became friendlier with Tu. Every day, their feelings for each other grew stronger. Hui Kong decided to pursue Tu, and the two became a couple. People had different views on the reasons for this love, but their love continued to deepen. In 1996, Hui Kong and Tu got married and started a family in Suzhou's high-tech zone. They looked very happy and affectionate. 
Kui Kong took care of his wife kindly and was considered an exemplary husband. So, Mr. Zhu Yan trusted him very much. With the support of his father-in-law, Hui Kong, who had a happy family, moved from a district hospital to a large hospital in the city. He had excellent medical expertise and professionalism. He was loved by everyone and became an admired doctor. Hui Kong's career continued to develop steadily and successfully. Four years after getting married, they welcomed their first daughter. This added sweetness to their happy life. However, beneath the harmonious and warm exterior, there were hidden cracks inside. In early 2001, a rookie nurse appeared in Hu Kong's department. Through communication at work, Hui Kong was impressed with her. He was a promising young doctor with a bright future. At the same time, the young nurse also admired Hu Kong and his success. And from then on, a new love story began to flourish between them. Every day, their feelings grew deeper. The flame of love was burning brightly in their hearts. They began to court each other, marking the beginning of an extramarital affair. The nurse quickly became Hui Kong's lover. Meanwhile, Zhang, a talented female doctor from a prestigious district hospital, joined Hui Kong's medical team. When they coincidentally worked together at the hospital, Hui Kong once again was admired for his excellence. This female doctor was also attracted to him, and shortly after, they quickly developed a close relationship. Hui Kong began to have multiple lovers, but his relationship with Zhang became particularly significant. Zhang even pushed him to divorce early to claim Hui Kong for herself. Meanwhile, Hui Kong often tried to bring his mistresses home, but was caught by his wife. Both still tried to keep their affair secret for various reasons. As a wife, it was impossible for Tu not to notice these things. However, Tu did not tell her father or confront Hui Kong. One of Tu's colleagues revealed these things. Meanwhile, Hui Kong was obsessed with his new lover. His wife became a thorn in his side, but divorce was unacceptable. He knew his career and family were closely linked, all thanks to his father-in-law's ability and reputation. If this relationship broke down, his future would be destroyed. He worried he wouldn't find another beautiful wife. In short, the outcome of divorce was a mess and the price to pay was too great. But things didn't stop there. He had a cruel plan to eliminate his wife while keeping his assets and status intact. This plan was a secret and prolonged murder plot. His goal was to make people believe it was an accident and make two disappear from the world completely. As a surgeon, Hui Kong had an in-depth knowledge of anesthetics and understood their danger. He decided to use ketamine, an anesthetic drug, to carry out his plan. He abused his position at the hospital to illegally obtain the drug multiple times. Hui Kong mixed the anesthetic into his wife's water and beverages. He always kindly brought her tea, water, and added small doses of the drug to avoid suspicion. He also made his wife drink water after going out to execute his plan. As a result, Hui Kong's wife, too, began to have heart problems. She often felt unwell and had to visit the doctor. Every time she fell ill, he pretended to examine and treat her, reporting that she had recovered after a simple saline infusion. Hui Kong took advantage of this situation to spread rumors about his wife's heart condition. With each episode of illness and the medical examinations finding nothing abnormal, Hui Kong felt it was time to execute the final part of his plan. In August 2003, he stole eight vials of ketamine, each containing 100 milligrams, from the hospital's operating room. On September 5th, Hui Kong took three tablets and poured them into a pre-prepared cup of coffee for his wife. He was at the hospital and called her to invite her for coffee. As a result, two quickly experienced a severe heart attack. Hui Kong immediately called the hospital and didn't return home. But this time, Tu survived the crisis because she didn't receive a sufficient dose of the drug. After the first failure, Hu Kong looked for another opportunity to kill his wife. After six days, on September 11th, the Mid-Autumn Festival, Hui Kong repeated his old plan and decided to increase the dosage. At 8 p.m., he poured the remaining five vials of ketamine into the coffee. After Tu finished it, she struggled to breathe severely. This time, Hu Kong was present at the scene and helped put Tu in bed to rest. 
Seeing his wife writhing in pain, Hui Kong pretended to comfort her by her side. He took the opportunity to wash the coffee cup right there and monitor his wife's condition to delay for two hours. Feeling Tu was on the brink of death, Hui Kong took her to the hospital for emergency treatment. Then he called his father-in-law's family. This time, Tu, 35 years old, couldn't escape the unfortunate fate anymore. On December 17, 2003, after more than three months, the People's Court of Suzhou held a public trial. Hui Kong, the defendant in the case, reversed his previous confession and denied all crimes committed before September 11th. He claimed that most of the time he was directly at the hospital and had no time to commit the crime. He didn't hesitate, but immediately carried out some rescue activities when the incident occurred. After six hours of tense trial, it was finally announced that the sentencing date would be chosen on January 2, 2004, around 10 a.m. The verdict was read in full. Dr. Hui Kong was sentenced to death for stealthily killing his wife with an anesthetic. For two years, Hui Kong used his professional knowledge. He continuously sought ways to destroy his wife's body with anesthetic, leaving everyone truly shocked. No one could imagine how Hui Kong could behave so cruelly. At the trial, Hui Kong claimed that the relationship between him and his wife was not good, and his wife too had a hot temper and a bad attitude towards her in-laws. Initially, he was not satisfied with Tu, but now he had a mistress. His dissatisfaction increased, and the intention to kill his wife arose. Even Hui Kong's parents spoke of confirming that the marriage between their son and Tu was a mistake. Everyone was surprised by what the family said. They believed that Hui Kong had used tricks to climb the big tree of Tu's family, to achieve the reputation and wealth he desired. This story is truly a real-life version, and in life, have you encountered any similar cases? And what do you think about today's case? Leave your comments below. Chinese Crimes will continue to analyze real cases in China in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video to support us. Thank you, and see you again in the next cases.